What is going on, guys? It is Adam and K. Marf, and this is Marf Fugel News. Welcome back. We have a great show for you planned today. We're going to talk about all the current events and what you should probably prepare for. We're also going to talk about the red, red glow that was seen over in the Atlantic. So we'll talk about that and much, much more, including world events, right when we return. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. I uh, can't say thank you enough. <laughs> What's going on, guys? It is Adam, a.k.a. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. Today, we have a ton to go over, so without further ado, I'll just let everyone new, uh, let you know that you can actually go to our website, marfugalnews.com, and go to today's show to get a full bibliography of every single article, tweet, video, picture, document that we're going to show you here today. We have archived on our website and allowed you to see where we got it from. Now, all of the sources are there. You can go and finish up the article if we only hit the headline, or again, you can go back and check my work retrospectively. There's a ton there and a ton that we're going to talk about today, but there's also a lot more. In fact, once you hit a yellow bar called uh, Overflow or Web clump, uh, Content, you will see that there is a whole other show down there. That's all the stuff we could not fit. Uh, for for instance, uh, the update on the Prez, basically uh, saying, you know, a doctor says, yep, thumbs up, he's cool. Uh, that's not really uh, newsworthy, but it is something that you should probably pay attention to. So that's over there. And all, over on the right, there are affiliates. There's products we'll mention during the show. Uh, with the purchase of those products, you are not only getting a discount, but you're also helping our small channel here. Again, we would like to expand. Thank you guys for all your support. Let's bring in my co-host slash internet brother, Dex James. Uh, and uh, let's see how you're doing. Dex, how are you and what's going on? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. So there is a call for max working temperature cap after EU heat wave deaths. So if you haven't noticed, there's heat waves around the planet, uh, the mid middle uh, Middle East, or not the Middle East, the Mid East, uh, the Midwest here in uh, the United States uh, just went through one, and uh, apparently where I am, the Northwest is about to go through a heat wave now. Uh, so we all over the place we are you know seeing these crazy high temperatures, but now they are basically trying to change. Uh, rules and regulations with unions to save the workers. It says trade unions called Monday for the European Commission to impose maximum temperature limits for outdoor workers after three people perished well on shift in Madrid during last week's withering heat wave. While a handful of member states have legislation limiting working hours in excessive heat, uh, the thresholds vary and many nations have no nationwide heat limits. According to the research by polling agency Eurofound, 23% of all workers across the EU uh, are being exposed to high temperatures a quarter of the time. That figure rises to 36% in agricultural and industry, uh, and it says in 38% for construction workers. So basically the farmer and uh, the uh, construction worker are out there all the time. 
I mean, pretty much anywhere you go in the world, you'll see uh, somebody who is just absolutely dark tan or just dark as day uh, that, you know, you'll see uh, covered in in, uh, overalls or you you cover in paint, whatever else. Uh, Construction is an outdoor job a lot of the time, and it is a rough one. I've done construction, and almost uh, every person that I know has at least done it once in their life. It is rough work. One of those things, though, is standing out in the sun. Uh, I'm sure that we have tons of Fugle fam that work outside, and it is rough. And I would have to ask you guys, don't you think that uh, it's getting kind of crazy as far as um, I, I think personally that it's changed? The sun is burning more, and there may be actual... Uh, information to back that up. We've talked about how uh, more of the kind of nasty rays are getting through uh, and it just feels different. And again, that's speculation as far as what you feel when you go out and you just sit in the sun for five minutes feels like you're out there for 30 minutes now. Maybe that's just an observation I'm making, but again, it's something that everyone is being affected. uh, I guess everyone is being affected around the planet uh, because of this heat. So we are covering this. Uh, Dex, as far as you guys went through over 100 degree temperatures there just recently, right? Yeah, we've had we've had our, our ups and downs with it. I don't think our temperatures are that high now, but we've got the typical humidity, which is just so unbearable. Like today, it was it felt like it was 100 degrees to me. It wasn't, but it was just so bad. You just go outside, you just start dripping and sweat. I believe it's uh, 92 degrees here right now. Uh, so it is very hot in my house. We got every fan going. I had to turn a couple off because it was so loud. It was rumbling the house and picking up on the mic. Um, it is. It is. Uh, it's one of the things. Like you know, here we don't get this crazy heat. And the last couple of years, of course, last year, many of you guys know, uh, we had a record-breaking day of all record-breaking days. We had a 118 degree uh, temperature here in the Northwest. In Seattle, it I mean, that's just unheard of. Uh, that's not e- that's not even heard of in Georgia, where you are. That's not even, I mean, that's rare in like Arizona. We're out in the desert. Uh, that's a high temperature. So things are definitely changing. I feel like there's at least something going on. And uh, who knows, it may have to do with, uh, you know, something above us. Bye bye San Francisco. The top seven U.S. city home buyers are seeking to leave. So this essentially talks about the data coming out of San Francisco, uh, again, well, and other places. Basically, people are leaving these once desired places, and they just don't want to. It don't want to be there anymore. From coast to ho- uh, coast to coast, prospective home buyers are on the hunt for affordability, even if that means leaving their city to find it. A record number of potential U.S. home buyers are seeking to relocate, according to a report published last week by Real Estate brokerage firm Redfin. The report ranked the city Redfin users appeared to most likely try to leave, and San Francisco, Los Angeles, and New York topped the list. The typical home in San Francisco or San Jose now costs more than $1.5 million. And I I did that because remember back in the day when a million-dollar house was a mansion? Now it's a shanty. Uh, here in Seattle, there is, uh, in fact, uh, my aunt purchased a house, not, I mean, what, 2006, something like that, and it was around 600000 It is now worth $2.4 million, uh, and it's in a normal neighborhood. It's not a big house. It's not a mansion by any means, uh, but it's the neighborhood that it's in. If you got lucky and bought 15 years ago in the right neighborhood, uh, you saved up your whole life, bought a, a just a relatively nice house. If it was in certain neighborhoods, right now, it's like you won a lotto. But again, what, what are you going to do with that money once you get it? You sell it for $2.4 million, you go somewhere else, and you get a regular house for that unless you are moving somewhere else. Now, I know two, uh, $1.5 million, like these houses that they're selling, in certain places, that gets you a lot. But in Seattle, that that doesn't even get you like a family home. I mean, there are people paying three hundred, four hundred, $500,000, half a million dollars more than asking price to beat other people out of houses. Now, I guess I've heard that the, the housing market is slowing down. People are worried that it's a bubble and it's about to burst. Um, again, 
I want to say like my aunt's house was t- just two years ago. It was like 1.2 million. So how do you even jump a million dollars in a house in a couple of years without it being a bubble? That's what I'm saying. Like this whole thing, this is like scary stuff as far as uh, people that are invested in real estate. Everybody is kind of afraid right now that this is going to uh, go sideways. And Dex, what do you think? Do you think that we are headed to some tumultuous times with the housing market and everything that's happening? Well, I like to I like to think about what the people who have money and I, when I talk about that, I'm talking about the elite, what they do with it. And if you've noticed, they've all put their money in real estate. So they've been buying it up. And that's why we have sort of why we have some of this bubble. Um, but I think that they, they tend to do that because they see the writing on the wall with the e- economics and the hyperinflation and things like that potentially coming and owning assets like homes or you know physical, tangible goods is usually better than holding on to cash and they have to invest their money somewhere. Um, so I, I, I do think that we'll see something go down, especially in the places that have seen the highest increase. They'll probably have the, the highest decrease. Uh, but I think there's a lot of other places that may not see, it may see more of a leveling out. And then, um, again, this is not financial advice, but in my opinion, you know, if something like hyperinflation happens, then it's all, you know, all bets are off because that's, you know, there's no telling what the, the house prices are going to do. Uh, and obviously, depending on location and, and demand. Well, it, it just shows you that people that have never thought of leaving their states, especially people that you know absolutely love their cities, almost everyone has thought about moving. Uh, we, of course, we've wanted to move for a long time. It's harder, though, when you have a ton of family somewhere. If you have uh, your mother and father and your sisters and your brothers and all sorts of different family where you live, it's pretty hard to move away. And then, of course, everyone has that family member that doesn't give a crap and they move uh, all the way across the country and uh, never visit. Uh, there's, of course, those too. But m- most people that are connected with their family, wherever their family's from, they usually try to stay in that area. What's sad is most people never really explore or get out. Um, again, like I'm I'm one of those. I, you know, I've been in Washington my whole life. I've moved around Washington quite a bit. But again, I haven't gone outside of Washington, and that's kind of sad. But uh, again, I have things holding me down here. Uh, including, you know, a ton of family. So it's it's hard for me to, uh, you know, go to some other state. But at the same time, it, it, it's insane that here, uh, $70,000 is extreme poverty for a family of four. Not poverty, but extreme poverty. When I look at places that my friends live and they're living and 70000 is the opposite, you would be doing well then I, I just think, man, we we got to get out of here. we got to move somewhere. Uh, but now it seems like everywhere is going up. Even if you go to a podunk town now, the prices of the houses and everything is going up. Uh, you know, I, I'm in the same boat as many of you guys. I, we, you know, we want to get a house one day. We want to buy a house. That would be awesome. Now is not the time. And what are we going to do? Wait and then see if it's going to burst and then figure something out then. It's just not good time. They want people in the future to all be in pods in uh, high rises stacked up on top of each other. And then we have G rocket debris expected to crash land in unknown location. And no, this isn't an old uh, article. This is a brand new and separate uh, incident. Uh, of course, we tracked a, a G rocket that, uh, of course, circled the uh, planet and ended up landing. Uh, we've actually tracked all all sorts of weird stuff, including the um, the Russian object as well that did the same thing. It and says, don't forget the moon. Yes, that, that's right. Some blame China for that one. That's right. And then we have uh, Xi on Sunday sent its new Wentian lab module into space to become part of its growing orbit space station. But scientists are unsure of exactly where the debris from the launch will ultimately crash land back on Earth. It says Xi used the long March 5 heavy lift rocket to send the Wentian or Wenshin uh, lab into orbit. But the rocket's tremendous weight of more than 1.8 million pounds means that it will not likely burn up uh, com- uh, completely on re-entry. It says, unfortunately, it is probable that the 21-ton core stage will be left in low or Earth orbit uh, to make an uncontrolled re-entry at an unpredictable location. So I'm surprised they don't have a solution for this or make it into something that will break apart even further. Uh you know, where could this thing land? Do they have any information of where it actually will, any kind of idea? Is this going to be something that we're all going to track like last time? 
Well, no, I don't, I don't think we know where it's going um, at the moment. We'll have to track it as it starts to come in. Cause the question is how, how is it going to come in? You know, there's not a lot of control and that's part of the problem. And a lot of people in the, in the space industry are kind of miffed it at G in his country for what they're doing, because this is, you know, a repeated uh, an offense, so to speak. And, and especially as it relates to space debris and, and having things come back down to, to earth and potentially have an impact to, to some, you know, society somewhere so you've got to you know you got to wonder like why are they why do they not have enough technology to to control this when everyone else that's been doing it pretty much uh controls what's how it's going to happen how they're going to come back down they put it in their plans and they 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 account for it well that that's what makes it seem really really weird uh it doesn't make too much sense to me as far as why uh, all of that happens uh, again, if this is something that's very unusual, it, it begs the question, you know, is there something else going on? Is this something different that they're doing that uh, they don't want the public to know about? Uh, why, you know, why is this twice in just a couple years that they've dropped these things and then they fly around? Is it some sort of test that they don't want to tell us that they're actually doing? Again, people are going to be tracking this once there is kind of a... Uh, you know, an estimated place where they can track it. I bet you the internet in a, just a few days time or whenever this thing comes back in or weeks or however long it takes, uh, this thing is going to be tracked and talked about by every one of my peers and we'll watch where it hits. What if it hit New York? What if it hits somewhere else? We don't know yet, but we'll see and we'll follow it. Uh, make sure to subscribe if you do want an update on this uh, mystery object coming back into uh, our orbit then make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit all notifications. That way you will be notified every single time we upload a video. And of course, just a quick reminder, go over to Marfugal News, our main channel. It uh, surpassed 220,000 subscribers. Make sure to subscribe over there for short uh, to the point videos. All right. And uh, I want to uh, thank Feathers and Flowers. Thank you. Before the show even started, uh, did a $5 super chat. Thank you so much. And then Lisa Marie, thank you and uh, for uh, subscribing and welcome to the Marfia. I appreciate you. Uh, and Fortaz Mouse followed over on uh, Twitch. It looks like Coucher, Bible Talk 777, Nana of Montana, and uh, Meepup007. Thank you so much for being the last ones out on the last show. All right, and then, uh, Dex, I'll have you talk about this one. Eric Schmidt thinks AI is as powerful as nu uh, nukes. And, of course, if you don't know who Eric Schmidt is, you can explain that. Uh, he, of, of course, yeah. worked for the company above us, right? Right. So he's the former uh, CEO of the OOG. And, yes, he is coming out and comparing AI to uh, nuclear weapons. And he's basically calling for a deterrence. Um, similar to what we have uh, with, you know, I, I guess the mutually assured um, and doing it in a way, he's saying we need to have some sort of uh, forum and, and agreement so that we don't allow any one country to uh, run the danger up of AI uh, in a way that it, it creates, you know, this, you know, horrible scenario where it basically takes on uh, a life of its own, so to speak, and puts, you know, countries against countries uh, digitally uh, and, and probably physically too, just because a lot of that stuff will be controlled digitally. So um, it's, it's definitely good to see another name making a call for this. I know we've, we've heard Elon talk a lot about how he's fearful of where things are going to go with AI, even though he's investing heavily in it himself. Um, and, you know, he uses that as an excuse to create other products or other things like, you know, brain chips and stuff like that to try to combat the future of AI. Uh, but definitely something um, that needs more attention. I don't know what the right solution is for um, if it's from a government point of view. I don't necessarily think the government <laughs> always does things uh, the, the most efficiently. Uh, but yeah, there's certain there, there's we do need something. Uh, to protect us if we don't, uh, if we just let this run rampant in any country, do what they want with AI, we're going to be in a really strange predicament in not the not too distant future. And uh, of course, the, uh, the, the whole thing is that most people do not understand. It goes, uh, it goes into how most people are totally misunderstood about what AI is and what it can do and what it isn't. Uh, I see that they, a lot of folks are minimizing what it can do. Uh, if poor, of course, a part in here says it is largely not as smart as people think it is. 
I think that's BS. Uh, I think that they are telling us that, but at the same time, we know that the Pentagon is saying that th this AI can do things that our, our brains can't even fathom. So, and, and they're also saying that G has AI uh, that's years advanced from us, that somehow they got ahead of us. And once you are ahead in AI, it's very hard to catch up. They'll always be ahead. If you're ahead in, in sp specifically AI, it's very hard to get caught up. Now, they, he may not know that the chief software officer at the Pentagon, he may not know uh, what the U.S. truly has, but from his position and from the title he had, it actually was part of his job to know that kind of stuff. And for him to retire, or not even retire, to leave, and on his way out saying, I don't want the blood on my hands, I'm leaving and here's why, and tell us that uh, Xi is you know, basically kicking our butt in that sector... Uh, that's kind of freaky. So we'll follow it and we'll be looking at all the patterns that come with this AI. Um, it's very scary because once AI really does get to a certain level, I don't think, I think part of it will be you don't even know that it's actually there. All right. And then uh, thank you so much for everybody that just popped in. Bible Talk 777. Thank you so much. Uh, and of course, uh, Danny, Dill Danny Dillinger. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing just now. Uh, Billy Bong Thornton, which actually I think you're probably the fourth Billy Bong Thornton that has subscribed. Uh, very common name, actually. Thank you and welcome to the Fugle fam. And then everybody that uh, just went in Coucher again, FG, I missed you last time. Thank you so much for your support. And then over on DLive, everybody that just popped in, thank you guys. I appreciate you. And it looks like we have... Uh, we have V Knight VNC. Hey, thank you. And Mystic Truth Ninja. Let's go. Uh, Gem Gem Chance Paladin. We, of course, have released the Quacken. Uh, Alice4321. Thank you for following. And then Vicky K. Uh, it says, V Knight VNC, you can feel the tension here in New York. God bless Fugle Fam, Adam, and Dex. Yeah, well, New York is going through a lot of uh, different things right now. Of course, you have the uh, the boom boom sniffing dogs going through the subway every day, which are freaking people out. And then, of course, you have a nuclear PSA that was just put out uh, for the first time in ever. Uh, Kimbria, hey everyone, hope you're all feeling awesome. Well, I hope you are as well. Yobi, he uh, hellos, thank you so much, Mystic and uh, Yotaga, thank you so much for uh, following. All right. Uh, before we move on, we're going to be talking about Elon, of course, begging Sergoy Brin for forgiveness, basically uh, an affair, which, again, we'll talk about that here in a second. I do want to remind you guys, today's show and every show is powered by energy, and that is because we have an uninterrupted power supply uh, through a Flex 1500. If you guys don't know what a solar generator is, I'd highly recommend doing your research on this one. It is one of the most coveted out there. It is the only uh, solar generator that can be protected against EMP with an EMP shield. Um, and it is also extremely, extremely small foot footprint and very portable and it is expandable. So if you want to just take one or two batteries with the main unit uh, to, you know, of course, the beach or tailgating or, uh, of course, bugging out, you can. Uh, or you can extend this out to 96 batteries. Uh, what is really cool about this one, though, is that the batteries stack in line. So there's no additional cord sticking out. There are other ones that actually expand. This one expands its in its own footprint. There's no huge cables uh, sticking out from it. So you can take up to five per stack and take it with you. Uh, this is an actual solution to a huge problem. If we do lose power for any reason, whether it be a storm, an earthquake, a tornado, or of course, SHTF uh, situation, then you would definitely want to have a backup power source. Now, most of you have already known, you know, that you've wanted to get one, but you're just trying to figure out which should you get. Uh, gas powered has its perks, but again, gas powered is now, uh, you know, $8 a gallon. And of course, it is loud. Solar generators take the sun and they can be charged, of course, by your wall, your car. Uh, but solar panels are the best part. It is absolutely silent. It makes no noise, which means no one is going to know you have one. Being stealth is going to be very important if you do have to bug out. But in general, uh, the fact that you can have this inside your home running is pretty awesome. There's no nauseous fumes. There's no nothing. And the best part is the waiting time is now very short. 
Some waited actually six months for theirs because the lithium technology is being held up by other companies or uh, countries, same thing. Uh, But again, now it is down to about a month wait time. This has a waiting list because these are extremely hard to get right now. So make sure to get your name on the list. Now there's $170 off on certain packages, so make sure to go check it out. You can get packages with, of course, batteries. You can get packages with foldable solar panels. You can get the whole nine yards. Again, at uh, marfuglenews.com slash energy. If you do end up going and purchasing one, it helps, uh, I guess, it helps uh, actually support us, but it also helps save you. Uh, it's, a, again, something really amazing to have power uh, when there is none. Marfuglenews.com slash energy. Thank you guys for everybody that has ordered or will order in the future. All right, uh, Dex. Uh, so first of all, Elon Musk, people talk about him a ton, and no matter what he does, he gets attention. Personally, I think that this is something that I don't know why mainstream is even covering. Uh, the guy has this kind of you know, reputation is, uh, you know, they we heard that he had a threesome with uh, what's-her-face, uh, Johnny Depp's you know, wife, ex-wife, and some other woman. Uh, he's like this billionaire playboy, and now apparently he uh, ended up sleeping with some guy's wife. Uh, personally, I think that that it does not look good for Elon, and it makes him look like a <laughs> makes him look like a, a d bag, to be honest. Uh, Dex, what do you think? Yeah, I, I would agree. Not not necessarily his uh, his greatest moments in in history, but uh, but yeah, this is apparently part of the news. Um, and you know, Sergey is one of the original founders of the Oog, uh, the the platform that owns this uh, platform. And you know, he his wife, I guess, was at an art uh, art Basil, I think is the name of it. It was an art show or something for a few days in Miami, and apparently Elon and her had a fling. And then he uh, immediately, shortly thereafter, um, he being Sergey, uh, filed for divorce. So uh, they're saying that that was the impetus of it. But others have said there's been other other issues going on. Not not that we get into the whole tabloid esque portion of this, but you know these high profile. I mean, he's like Sergey's like one of the. I don't think he's the top five or he's in the top ten at least. Uh, yeah, he's eighth richest uh, in the world. So he's in that you know multi multi billionaire club. Uh, and a matter of fact, him and Elon were were good friends, and they're not on speaking terms anymore. Obviously, so. Well, okay. So I just want to say one thing. It's it's incredibly obvious when a woman not only sleeps with one in the top ten, you know, richest people. But when sleeps with the number one richest person, that's a gold digger. I'm sorry. Uh, she's not to, She's not at no fault here. And it's not like she slept with some like actor or something or slept with some uh, construction worker or the pool boy. She slept with another billionaire. It's very obvious the kind of uh, guys that she goes for. At the same time, Elon... Being the person he is, he can he can have any gold digger he wants. If if he's looking for gold diggers, I mean, he's like a gold digger's dream, right? But why would you go for a married woman? That's just a pos thing to do. Um, it's like you know he tries to he tries to do the funny stuff, but it's like what are you doing, Elon? <laughs> She's married. Anyways, uh, and then the the fact that he ended up uh, being one of the founders of this thing that's just nuts. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I understand that it, a lot of people here have had that. Some of you may have, have had that happen to you. Uh, it's it's just a horrible thing. Uh, you can have a, a lot of different women in the world, Elon. Why choose a married one? And then a mysterious red glow over the Atlantic Ocean leaves a pilot baffled. So this is a trip. Now, if you saw our show a few days ago, there was a really crazy purplish red glow in the sky. And they actually said it was a marijuana operation. And somehow they said that this huge glow in the sky that was lighting up all of the clouds was a, you know, an operation growing stuff. And they said that the the windows, the system that does the blinds, opened up. But it didn't make any sense. There was light, you know, just glowing the whole uh, entire sky. And some people said maybe there was upward lights because it's a grow operation, so they have lights up and down. But I'm still thinking, like, well, isn't there a roof? Is it a greenhouse? Is it a glass place? It did this huge, crazy glow. Well, how are they going to explain this one? Uh, Is there a grow operation in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? Uh, this looks pretty trippy, but this is 
you know, supposedly a, a photo from way, way up in the uh, sky. I don't know if this is at 35,000 feet or something like that, uh, but it's crazy, crazy glowing. Uh, it says the site was spotted over the Atlantic, and it says we were all see the mesmerizing views when flying, but some are more exceptional than others. A pilot flying over the Atlantic noticed one of these. According to a post sh shared on Reddit, the caption says, Mysterious red glow seen over the Atlantic. Pilot says he's never seen anything like it. Uh, it says the images show an almost frightening red glow that cannot be explained. This did not stop people from commenting on the thread with their own thoughts of what the phenomenon may be. It says maybe fishing vessels have never clustered uh, so much in, uh, to concentrate so much light. Uh, three possible scenarios. Fish populations down to small concentrations. Uh, G fishing boats have fished out the Pacific and now factory fishing in, in the Atlantic. Uh, or three Atlantic-based fishing boats have adopted uh, Xi's factory fishing strategy. Now, they're trying to make fun of uh, when Xi, you know, they all had their lights on and they've done this factory fishing thing where the glow. Uh, in fact, we've even covered when they surrounded Taiwan. You saw a green glow around the island and they did that on purpose to scare the Taiwanese people. Or at least that's what they said. Uh, but this is really quite trippy. Now, some of these are a, a big glow and you can't see a very specific light source. But then, of course, you see this one. And this one shows two extremely bright kind of dots right there. Uh, do you think that this is some sort of military structure? It almost looks like a fleet. Dex, what do you think? Well, I, you know, I, I just hit me as... Maybe it's uh, underwater volcanic activity underwater volcanic activity oh, and i wonder if they would be able to pinpoint that or if the pilot knows the location and they could determine if that was where it was but i don't know what it looks like underwater but maybe that's what it is well it, it's not only going you know it would not only be shining through the water but it would also be shining through the clouds that's what's a trip you would think if it was glowing uh could it be lava i mean it, it just straight up looks like lava right but then again, would you see that not only through the water, but then through the clouds? That's well, and, and and think about it though. Like when you're in a plane at that height and you see another plane as far away as those clouds, it's barely barely visible. It's really really tiny. And mind you, a, a very big jet plane is you know equivalent length or or even longer than a, a fishing vessel. So for fishing vessels to create that much light, I don't care how many of them there are there, that at this this altitude, I don't know. That just seems like it's and I know they're not saying that's what it is. That's just somebody's speculation. But what if it's just, fire? You know, what if it's fire? What if this is a military yeah. test where they're blowing stuff up and that this is different boats that they've set up and they've attacked? Do you know what I mean? Like what if this was yeah. What if this is some sort of uh, sea test? They've been doing those the last three weeks. We've covered multiple uh, just like a week and a half ago. We covered, uh, it was probably about a week and a half ago, <coughs> where they uh, sh we do an annual thing for the last, uh, at least for the three years, they take a decommissioned ship and then blow it up with live fire to actually test, you know, hitting an object. Uh, I just wondered. This is out in the middle of the ocean. And uh, what trips me out, though, is it's the same kind of glow uh, that we've seen in like the last two months. And then, of course, you have all the stuff being said about the uh, UFOs and all this stuff in Congress and all these hearings. And now there's new groups looking at it. Uh, was it a fleet of UFOs? What do you guys think? I will open up the uh, chat. What do you guys think that this was? I would love to see some ideas of what you think or your theories on this. Again, I will uh, pop it on screen so we can see that. <coughs> But yeah, so I'll be interested to see what everybody thinks it is. Uh, and then, by the way, thank you, Release the Quacken. Thank you again, uh, Alice and uh, Steve McQueen. Thank you again uh, for your support. And let's see here. Uh, Bobby Lee, thank you so much for uh, supporting as well. I appreciate that. And then thank you, Darren Dillinger, for uh, the comments. This is my first support. Thank you so much. I just found your channel. Hey, I appreciate you. And again, drop how you found me. Uh, Snow Leo, thank you so much for the super sticker. I appreciate that. And uh, Sterile Wilson, thank you. It's Sterile Wilson, uh, thank you so much for subscribing. All right. 
<laughs> Let's see what people are saying. All right, so we're going to pop open the chat, and then we're going to move on and see what you guys think about that. USG in a heated microwave weapons race. Now, this is something that I talked about two or three years ago. I actually did drone shots of a very mysterious company uh, that was right next to Walmart, and they were sharing container space. Uh, that was really... Oh, somebody said ballistic missiles. Uh, that would be very, very freaky if that was. those. I think that would be low, but I don't know. The hypersonic ones that they talk about right now are actually... Um, they are actually, uh, like Vlad claims that his hypersonics can fly low and under the radar and even navigate. Uh, so that's that's a thought too. Somebody else well, said pole flip. Go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, let's not forget the um, with the recent Pentagon stuff and everyone else talking about the unidentified objects, they're saying they're ocean or sea-based as well. So maybe it's maybe it's some you know group of UFOs underwater or out from underwater. Oh, that's right. Yeah, we did cover that as well. Um, and then it says fire equals smoke, saying like maybe that would... It's a weird pattern too. Somebody... So, by the way, 2012 saw pillars of light, microwave. So, this next story, it actually kind of... It could relate to this. What if this is some sort of microwave weapons being tested? Something that uh, does this, or lasers or something. I don't think... Lasers could be spread out to make a, a super bright light or something. I don't know. Uh, again, I'm not an expert, but what I do know is I have covered that uh, in the last few years, they are. it's a growing importance on these microwave weapons and actually being equipped with this kind of kind of weaponry. This is a whole new zone on an old technology. What, you know, microwave ovens have been around for a long time and the microwave technology has, but what they are doing with it and how they are morphing it and evolving it with other technologies is absolutely mind-boggling. It says this month the US is wrapping up tests of its high-powered joint electromagnetic uh, non-kinetic strike weapon. And get this. They actually called it hijinks at Naval Air Station China Lake. Now, remember, China Lake is also that place we talked about when Trinity called in uh, and the, the place we covered that had the 7.1 earthquake after a 6.4 earthquake, and it was epicentered directly below the weapons testing facility. And almost no one asked questions except for our community. Our community did, and I'm not saying Marfugel. I'm saying in general, we talked about it, but the mainstream didn't. How do you not how do you not see the connection? It's directly epicentered under a weapons testing facility, uh, an earthquake, and then a second earthquake over a seven that people felt 500 feet away or 500 miles away. We got videos of people's pools sloshing around and nobody questioned that. Now they're testing hijinks. I mean, literally called hijinks. The uh, high powered joint electromagnetic non kinetic strike weapon takes advantage of major military powers ever increasing reliance on sophisticated electronics making them vulnerable to electronic attacks that aim to destroy these systems damage sensitive components deny their use and degrade their capabilities hijinks may be useful in conventional conflicts or against adversaries with no defense against cruise missiles such as insurgents defense analyst kelsey at horton notes in uh, c4 isnet it says, however, he cautions that hijinks may be less useful against low-tech adversaries with nuclear weapons such as NK. It says Pyongyang relies primarily on aging Soviet-area artillery, which would be essentially unaffected by a high-powered microwave blast. So this is something we've talked about many times before, is that some of these enemies have such old technology that it's actually becoming harder to defend against because now we have upgraded all of our stuff to actually defend against high tech, uh, you know, stuff when actually the old school stuff are the things that are going to keep running. If we had an EMP, we of course would need, if, if they did knock out a bunch of our newer stuff, they would need to go back to our older stuff to actually do it. And then Dex, wasn't there something else? There was like our uh, communication systems and all sorts of things. It's like, yeah, it the old it stuff. reminds me of the doomsday planes they, that we just covered that we talked they're all analog everything in them was analog technology and they left it that way because it allowed them not to be hit by things like microwaves or emps exactly it was all analog it's all old school 
and it's one of the uh, most advanced planes in our uh, arsenal because it can survive anything, uh, but it's also the most non-advanced airplane as well. It cannot be touched by, you know, it can't, it can't be affected by EMP and all of these other new technologies. So it's just kind of funny that it's it's almost like a, it's retro coming back into style, only these weapons are actually becoming harder and harder to defend against. Uh, same with all of these conflicts we've talked about, some of the old school stuff. When we went into uh, the Middle East, the thing is, is we weren't fighting these high tech uh, enemies. They were guerrilla warfare. They were just, you know, putting stuff under the dirt and you step on it, you go boom. Uh, there was it was really hard to defend against that kind of stuff. Uh, it says Xi getting seriously prepared for Pelosi visit to Taiwan. Now I find it surprising there's still no date, official date on this actual uh, trip. Uh, but this has been talked about multiple times. We've covered it all the times that they've said that they were going to go. The previous time was delayed because uh, Xi actually came down with the stuff, the stuff that we're uh, we've been uh, having around since 2019. And then now they're saying that she's going to go again. It says she said it was getting seriously prepared for the possibility that Nancy Pelosi visits Taiwan in the coming weeks, underscoring the risk of a showdown between Washington and Beijing over a trip by the U.S. White House speaker. It says that uh, Xi Foreign Ministry spokesman Zhao Lijian made the comment in response to Financial Times report that Beijing had previously issued warnings about the planned trip that were significantly stronger than past threats. Zhao did not elaborate on uh, Xi's preparations for the trip, which could be the first delegation by someone in that role in 25 years. It says the Xi side has repeatedly made clear to the U.S. side our serious concern over Speaker Pelosi's potential visit to Taiwan and our firm opposition to the visit. It says uh, reporters on Monday regular news briefing says we are ser getting seriously prepared. So they're implying they are implying that they are absolutely 100% going to do something, you know, if if we uh, send the Speaker of the House. Speaker of the House is third in line to be president. If we, if we lost our president and vice president, the Speaker of the House would actually take that spot, and scary as that sounds. Uh, but also, uh, it is the highest position. They've had, we've covered, you know, people going over there like generals and things like this, uh, but never a Speaker of the House or above since uh you know in 25 years so what are they so afraid of and are they saying that you know if they visit it's because of their ranking what are they going to do i i think that g in their country and every country knows when there's a leader meeting with another leader usually there's things that are going down dex i, I think about how vlad just met with the ayatollah met with cuba met with g met with uh Kim, Kim in the last couple years, all these meetings, things go down and things happen right after. Oh, and then met with uh, Erdogan, uh, the Turkish leader, uh, you know, as all of this stuff is going on with NATO and everything else. What do you think about uh, about this and, and their strong rhetoric words and all of this? Well, yeah, these these trips are, are you know, on one hand, they um, they probably seem like they don't do much because they're just conversations. Right. But at the end of the day, these are world leaders and they actually show a significant uh, level of of either cooperation um, or support. Um, unless it's something, you know, like two adversaries meeting to, you know, negotiate peace or something like that. But, um, but yeah, when you see, you know, somebody like, you know, the Speaker of the House going to Taiwan and with all the, um, you know, the, the way things are set right now with whether or not we should treat them as an independent country, whether or not we're going to support them and if they're uh, invaded, all of that, you know, this definitely can send a, a very strong signal to the rest of the world, which is why Xi is so upset about it, right? This is a very high ranking official. You know, they were upset over small delegates of, of people that were hand selected by the administration to go over there, but not necessarily in any particular, you know, a, a official capacity. They were just delegates. But this is this is a big deal. This they is were almost like as big of a deal as, as, you know, the VP going there. They were like former delegates too, or something. It was and they had former positions, but they were they were made into a delegation to go talk, and 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 so yeah, they had a role for that purpose. But yeah, yeah. So they they didn't have, 
uh, the ability to make any you know official deals. They could kind of pass a message along, but they couldn't really do much. So this is this is something we're heavily paying attention to. If you want to get the updates on this as it goes, when the date end ends up being set, if it gets canceled, I have a feeling it's going to be canceled altogether. Uh, if something else doesn't go wrong, if it doesn't. Uh, this is something that is is obviously uh, it, it needs attention. That's for sure. Um, now make sure to subscribe, hit that notifications bell if you have not already. If you want to get the update, all right. And then Lisa Z, thank you for uh, joining us. Thank you for subscribing. And then FG, I appreciate that. Thank you f- so much for the support. It says don't forget the answers in the Bible, and I believe uh, was referencing the red glow. I guess what would that be then? Uh, but yes, uh, that is true. June Cappadonna, uh, thank you for subscribing. And uh, it, it's a, it's a, thank you so much for subscribing as well. Thank you for joining in just now. All right. And then before we talk about Taiwan holds drills amid Pelosi visit concern, just want to remind everybody, if you haven't already, make sure to go over to marfuglenews.com slash prep. You can get long-term survival food. You can get MREs that are sealed in packages, so they're all just laid out for you. If you want to get a 72-hour kit so you have three days' worth of food, uh, you can do that. You can get a one-month kit, a three-month kit. Again, they have all sorts of different uh, packages, and you will get a discount of $150 off on the three-month supply right now if you use marfuglenews.com slash prep. That has everything you need to survive food-wise for one person for three months. Again, that's how most of their packages work. You just add water or cook with water, and you have uh, food basically keeping almost all of its flavor because they are freeze-dried, uh, and they have a 25-year shelf life. They also have tons of other stuff. Marfuglenews.com slash prep also has the Alexa Pure Pro. If you don't trust what's in your water, highly recommend a gravity-fed uh, filtration system like the Alexa Pure. Uh, And they also have iodine tablets and power sources. They have uh, survival books, all sorts of things you would need. Because, again, you won't have Google uh, to look things up if everything hits the fan. That's marvuglenews.com slash prep. Thank you, guys. And, again, you uh, most cases get a discount and you are supporting the channel at the same time. So we always pay attention to the drills that are going on. This is yet another and it's happening right now. It, uh, it, there, uh, and then there's also all sorts of things going on off of the east and west coast. I'd highly recommend people pay attention to both coasts right now. Taiwan's capital staged air raid drills Monday, and its military mobilized for routine defense exercises, coinciding with concerns over a forceful G uh, response to a possible visit to the island by U.S. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi. It says, while there is no direct link between Xi's renewed threats and Taiwan's defensive moves, they underscore the possibility of a renewed crisis in the Taiwan Strait, considered the potential hotspot for conflict that would envelop the entire region. Air raid sirens were sounded in the capital, Taipei, and the military was holding its annual multi-day hand quang drills, including joint air and sea exercises and the mobilization of tanks and troops. Apparently, though, this one had uh, certain exercises that have never been done before, and they were very specifically centered on the intelligence that they got from G actually testing uh, drilling to take the capital. So if you if you did not know G and his country, they actually have a replica of the Taiwanese capital set up that they have been drilling and practicing on taking over. So they have actually constructed a building that looks just like the building in in uh, uh, Taiwan's Taipei. So pretty, pretty freaky stuff. The, the fact that they are directly drilling to prepare for the information they got for how Xi would be taking it, that kind of says something. Uh, Dex, do you remember when we first covered that as far as we, we covered the fact that they were drilling to take out our... Uh, you know, aircraft carriers, exact, you know, exact size replicas of our aircraft carriers. And then they also had a fully, uh, uh, basically a... a, uh, They had a replica of the Capitol, uh, the the Capitol building, I'm I'm sure, and a handful of other things, uh, very very large uh, military bases uh, that they had set up uh, so that they could 
you know, do run drills. They being Xi's country uh, in their in their country had have all sorts of of these uh, locations created that replicate other locations around the world where they you know feel they need to be training to, uh, you know, to invade or to to uh, go into. So when you see that, that's the most probable scenario that they're drilling for. Uh, you, people no, don't want to think about it. People don't want to think that this could ever happen. But at the same time, this is what the world's been preparing for. This is what every country has been doing. Look at what is being put together right now. There, of course, is the NATO uh, alliance. And then, of course, you have uh, the, the Asian countries and, and of course, uh, Russia and Iran and all these countries all meeting up on a regular basis now. You have every one of them cross meeting. Uh, that does not, that looks like they're picking sides. So it is definitely something that we are paying attention to. Uh, drills, of course, can always turn into a real event. Uh, drills can also be centered around possible information of something actually happening. So we'll, we'll see. Of course, most of the time it is a drill for the most possible scenario. Uh, Dex, go ahead. I was going to say, don't forget they even have a, uh, a version of the Pentagon there. It was designed to be a mall, but they never they haven't done anything with it. It's like a ghost town. So maybe it's a maybe it's a, a center they use for drilling. Lunacy Prepper says, "What the hell is she going to Taiwan?" Well, that's what she says. And like I said, I I have my doubts. I wonder if they will do that. If it, what's crazy is Vlad sets all these red lines and we cross them all day. But I have seen at least five or six red lines in the last six months that G sets and they won't do it or they'll come up with some excuse. Uh, they set a red line and it wasn't nowhere near as harsh as it was this time. And then magically, uh, you know, Nancy, you know, she came down with the stuff. So she didn't go that first time. There was just as much drama about her going uh, before when she caught it uh, that there is now. But again, now it's even worse. So I, I just wonder if it's actually going to happen. All right. Uh, thank you, Luna C. Prepper. Thank you for supporting Independent. I appreciate you. Uh, J Joint Chiefs Chairman Milley sees G's intercepts of aircraft and ships in Pacific region surging over past half decade. So it is Milley. Uh, I, I just I have not liked him since I found out that he uh, called his uh, basically called his same position in G's country before the uh, January stuff that went on and after the stuff went on and said that he would warn G if we were going to launch a nuke or do a surprise attack. Dex, can you can you kind of believe that he's one of the few that has stuck around? Why do you... Well, yes, I can believe it only because I don't trust it, right? Um, but if, if I thought it, things were supposed to work the way they should work, yeah, the guy shouldn't be there. Uh, but the fact that, you know, that none of us have much trust in the way our government operates, then, yeah, I can believe he's still there, even after those crazy antics of just saying, yeah, I'll, I'll flat out tell you if we're going to invade. Well, dude, he is willing to, uh, he, first of all, he's willing to do whatever, the, he's a yes man, right? They have gotten rid at least 12 high-ranking uh, government, uh, I'm sorry, military officials and they have wiped out all sorts of just really top-ranking guys that have been with the military forever. Uh, just recently, in three months, they got rid of 12 high-ranking military officials. Uh, but yet somebody like him sticks around because he goes with it. He testifies on things. He does all these different things. He's always in the news. And he's always saying something. The fact that he was going... If we were... Even if T-Man is the president or anybody was the president... If we were going to launch a surprise or first strike against Xi's country, you have somebody who is high-ranking military that said that they they wanted the people to check with him first and supersede the authority of the president, whoever it was. And then, of course, he said he would call and say, hey, we're by the way, we're going to do a first strike surprise on you. What is that called? Sorry, but that's sounds like I, I you know others have said treason others have said uh that it's uh, being a traitor all sorts of things but now he's still in the news it says the Xi military has become significantly more aggressive and dangerous over the past five years the top u.s military official said during the trip to the indo-pacific that included a stop sunday in indonesia u.s general mark milley chairman of the joint chiefs of staff 
uh, said the number of intercepts by G uh, aircraft and ships in the Pacific region with U.S. and other partner forces has increased significantly over that time. <clears throat> And the number of unsafe interactions has risen by similar proportions. So it may, you know, it, it lets you know why people think that both, you know, all the sides are working together. It's like he's saying this, but he's the same guy that was going to give his counterpart a call before we did an attack if, if that was to happen. So pretty, pretty crazy stuff. And then we have Vlad moves to shut agency handling uh, immigration to Israel amid UKR rift. Uh, Dex, will you cover this one? Yeah, so this is this is kind of interesting in the sense that um, Vlad is really doing something here uh, against a a uh, organization and the groups that work uh, with the Is country specifically. So what he's doing is shutting down this agency. Um, and it is kind of a backhanded slap to the is country, so to speak. And is is not happy about it. Now, keep in mind, you know, in the ME, there's been a lot of uh, consternation, uh, obviously, between is and the um, I uh, ran to the store uh, country as well. But keep in mind, Russia is uh, Vlad is a ally with them. But Think about back a little bit to everything that went on in the S country that over the pipelines that they were trying to put through there. You know, we spent years in addition to the A country, but in the S country doing a lot of things against uh, Vlad and that we is the U.S. and is right. So there's been this ongoing tension uh, between them. So they're not necessarily uh, friendly, but these types of actions and activities certainly go right in the face of of that country and uh, it could you know again be another reason to bring about uh dislike and or you know bad favor towards them as it relates to you know geopolitics and other things well we'll see what happens it says the court's website does not say what laws the nonprofit agency had broken and the vlad's justice ministry which filed its dis dissolution on july 15th did not respond to the comment uh, to comment. It says Kremlin Press Secretary Dmitry Peskov, however, said that the dissolution of the agency was related to a breach of compliance with Vladian legislation, uh, although he refused to give further details, which basically saying, like, we can do what we want. And then Vlad is struggling to repair thousands of destroyed combat vehicles, or at least that's what British intelligence says. Now, remember, uh, almost all of the intelligence that has come out of this stuff has come from actually UKR intelligence. We're seeing a lot more, I've noticed, uh, British and U.S. intelligence saying a lot of this. It says that Vlad is likely struggling to extract and repair combat vehicles damaged in the conflict in UKR, uh, of course, Britain's Ministry of Defense has said. In a Monday intelligence update, the ministry said that the Vladian Army facility, six miles from the UKR border, was created to refit and refurbish broken combat vehicles, close to 300 damaged vehicles, including armored personnel carriers and battle tanks, were identified at the lot. Among other, quote, well-documented personnel problems, such as reportedly using private mercenaries to reinforce its depleted front line. The defense intelligence went on to say uh, Vlad continues to struggle to repair the thousands of broken military vehicles that have been damaged in the, the conflict in UKR. So it, we see this pattern of a roller coaster. They say that they're doing well, and then they say they're doing bad. When they say that Vlad is doing well, usually you know it's right before they are about to uh, shell out another $800 you know, million dollars or a billion dollars to the cause. When they say that Vlad is doing bad, it's generally, you know, it, it's in between the, the rough patches, right? Um, as, as far as the uh, vehicles go and what, what is going on there, I don't know what is exactly happening, but I, I do know that Vlad has a whole lot more. Go ahead, Dex. Well, you know, the, the first line of this of this article sort of tells it all. And it starts off and it's the third sentence and it's likely. So this is coming from an official intelligence. Right. But they're saying it's likely. So in other words, it's their opinion. They can't really they can't really tell it. So it's their way of being able to make this statement, but then not having to live up to it. Right. 
uh, as opposed to saying we factually know X, Y, and Z, or we've actually uncovered these three things, or we have evidence of, of, of this and we can show proof. It's just, it's likely. So, you know, when we talk about all of these things, um, no matter who they're coming from, you always pay attention to how they phrase it and, and what they do, because it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that they it is, it is absolute because they're not saying it's absolute, right? Well, and they do this so much. They, they'll they say something and they'll word it just right. They Technically, they're right, or technically, they said likely, right? So then later on, if it's t completely untrue, then basically they can say something that makes people feel better about it or make people feel like, oh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. They minimize a whole lot of stuff that's going on. They minimize the uh, uh, amount that's been taken, uh, the, the folks that have been following this that actually know people there have said they have taken a lot of uh, a lot more land than than what we are hearing. Again, I can't verify that myself. I've never been there. Uh, but if if you have family there and you've talked to them and and uh, it's different, then please email me. I would love to hear your side of the story. And then make sure to comment down below what you think is uh, what is actually going on. I love you guys. Thank you for uh putting those comments down there and thank you for staying in the chat all right and then uh vladdy and soldier who refuses to fight are being held captive in pits and again uh these kind of pits apparently they're getting tortured it says that vladdy and soldiers who refuse to fight in the uk are uh, conflict are being held captive in these pits or it has been claimed it says con uh, contracted troops who request to leave the front are reportedly being sent into custody in Moscow held areas of Luhansk Oblast uh, before being shipped back out to the conflict. It is it is understood soldiers uh, were promised leave after three months service and the opportunity to opt to be removed from the conflict completely. But the agreement was allegedly uh, reneged uh, upon some soldiers submitting refusal letters and they were instead arrested and taken to the city of Bianca. So again, where this information is coming from is very important. I just ask everybody to question everything. Um, like I said, there's a, a cycle in the mainstream where they show going good, going bad. There is uh, prop and, of course, the ganda going every which way. So it, it's, uh, uh, I would just say... Don't let this feel, don't let this uh, let you feel any kind of way. Dex, uh, it, what do you think about this? It's, it's, they don't even say, again, they, they're careful about their wording. Yeah, and they're, they're very clear with the, and again, in the first line, being claimed. claimed. So, <laughs> yeah, so you have to, you have to just sort of like look at this and say, you know, where's it coming from and, and is it Ganda or not? But um, at the same time, you know, you can also, imagine this could go on on any side for that matter right um i i wouldn't like to think that it would ever happen on our side if we were in a conflict like that i don't think we would treat our own soldiers that way but um it's not unfathomable in my mind to think that there aren't uh other countries out there that you know twist the arm so to speak on folks and and want them to perform duties beyond what they're willing to do well we'll see and by the way thank you eight atx1 i appreciate the super sticker there uh, Snow Leo FG and then uh, of course uh, Cal Share and Kanos Kids Stephen McMahon Carol McLean Justin Hamill Survival Game Gail Firestorm Joseph Newhouse Mineral Water appreciate you and then of course Tina Smith and Canine Therapy Inc uh, Irish Rebel Dear Earth Observer thank you guys for uh, your comments on remote control and thank you for the super thanks over on uh, the last video Dave Round uh, Dave Round actually and Jimmy Wright. And Lori Oder, uh, thank you guys for doing super thanks on the replay. All right, and then uh, we are actually. Uh, I, I would I, quick question for all of you guys: If you guys want to see us collaborate with another channel, please let us know. Please comment down below if you've gotten this far in the show. Comment a channel that you would like to see us work with or collaborate with. 
and go a step further. Uh, let other channels know about us and, and let them know uh, we would love to have them on the show for interviews or uh, to talk about their specific skill set or their talents. Uh, or if you have a talent or a skill set or if you are in a position where you have a cool job and like to talk about it, let us know. You can email me at adam at marfugalnews.com or you can email dex at dex at marfugalnews.com uh, or do the smart thing and CC both of us. All right, and then before um, Dex talks about, of course, all of the crazy stuff that is going on on web only, I do like to remind you, if you want to protect yourself against EMP and CMEs, you can actually do so with EMP Shield. Again, EMP Shield is actually uh, the only provider that makes a EMP Shield for the energy solar generator. So if you already got one of those, make sure to go check out their protection for it. But if you want to have your car running after an EMP or all three phases of an EMP, uh, then make sure to go over and check this out. You can actually equip this to your car in about under 15 minutes, 10 if you're fast, 8 if you're really fast. Uh, again, and it will keep running after multiple EMPs. Again, they come in phases. They also come in, in waves. Uh, this has, this they did uh, up to 42 or 43 tests with zero degradation of the unit, and literally they just kept going. They, they gave up at one point because it was so much. Uh, also, it can protect against solar flares and CMEs, up to 228,000 amps if you want to protect your stuff and keep it going, like your house, your RVs, your motorcycles, even your ham radios. Uh, you can get that there, marfuglenews.com slash EMP. All right, uh, Dex, let's go over the web only. There's lots of, uh, lots of unique stuff here. Uh, Tons and tons of stuff uh, did not make it into the show today. Yeah, absolutely. So head over to marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show, or on YouTube, open that description and click on show notes. It'll take you right here to this web page, and you will see all the articles we just covered. So you got a source for everything there. And then you're going to get to overflow. This is the rest of the story. So everything else we didn't get to, we got updates uh, around uh, inflation or the econ economy and what's happening there. Um, some stuff with the marketing, uh, the market uh, around housing and what may or may not be happening there. Um, and and more and much more. There's even some updates, kind of going hand in hand with with Elon and others around uh, CEOs and what what's going on with them. Of course, there's the update on our current administration and his uh, health, uh, which I guess is sort of just a uh, nothing to see here. Everything's fine, um, and much more. And then of course, a lot of other things about our own health and about our own and what's been going on with. Uh, those things that uh, they want everyone to take, as well as much more. So head over uh, marfuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for the show. Uh, you'll find everything else. Lots of lots of great stuff, L like literally an entire show's worth of information there. So go check it out and you see what you've been missing. And if you missed a day or two before, look on those days. There's just as much information on the other full nightly shows. Any of our any of our long format shows, we have all of this additional content available for you every day. There's an interesting study there as well that talks about a third of, uh, I'm sorry, most Americans believe that the government is not good. Uh, it says a third say that a armed revolution may be necessary soon. Check that one out. And then, of course, uh, by the way, we did not talk about how one of the head people over at that huge worldwide organization uh, said that the monkey business is now a... Uh, basically changed the status of it to everybody should be worried about it. So pay attention. Uh, something that happened in 2019 could very well happen again, whether you want it to or not, or whether you uh, are fully into it or not. So make sure to pay attention to that. Go down to that. I think it was the third, fourth one up from the bottom. Make sure to read that. And then also go back through the last couple shows. Like Dex said, there's tons of stuff that has been going on over the weekends uh, man, just nuts. All right, and thank you, everybody, for showing up today. Tomorrow will be a call-in show, so remember at 224400-MARF, you'll be able to call in tomorrow. Make sure to get in early on the show. Uh, we're going to have a great one. Uh, and then, uh, again, make sure to join us over on the other channel, Marfugal News, our sister channel, uh, for short videos. We're going to be covering some crazy stuff, and then in the next week, uh, there will be some on-site stuff, so make sure to subscribe to it over there. Uh, thank you, Dex, for your service. I appreciate you. Thank you. Much love. Great job. 
Make sure to also go to uh, go see marfuglenews.com slash off grid. Check out the bags there. Really awesome Faraday bags. Again, great stuff. All right. Have a good night, guys. It is now time for the shout row. It's not an outro, it's not a shout out. It's a shout row. Nobody getting out of here. Miss the 
entire show. Johnny could hang a whole Mick Kelly. Everybody go both bang. I go back now. Make another bang on Gigi and my mother spy. With the mic that on the mold now. I tin for your head, don't know no more like y'all. Tip on the mic in the in your web star. Bring it on the down now. Everybody make a mess up. Bring it down now. Let's make a new one. Make sure to join us over on Marfugal Jams.